It's time for that point in every person's life. When you're playing with a classic car, you got to touch the wiring at some point. My old Camino has had trouble with the turn signals for years. Why haven't I corrected it? Because it's a race car. But why the heck, if it's a race car, why do I want turn signals? Because it's actually kind of nice to have in the pits to be able to say, hey, I'm going that way when you're dealing with cars that don't, you know, turn so nice. Being able to anticipate where someone's going is a little, you know, courteous, pleasant. Plus, this car's got license plates. I'd like to be able to drive this thing on the street. So the first thing I'm doing is going around verifying operation of what works, what doesn't, what doesn't work when I do this, how are things working, what are the headlights doing, what are the marker lights doing when I make all the appropriate turns and stuff. So now that I know what works and what doesn't, I'm referring to the factory service manual. Uh, this is the wiring supplement, which is really nice to have on some of this stuff. Uh, going to the section talking about turn signals. And there is a whole diagnostic procedure that the factory recommends you take uh, in the event that you know, you're having faults with the turn signals or any other system in here. So basically the first order of operations is to verify that I have, uh, you know, good power at uh, my distribution block, good power at the fuse, make sure the fuse isn't popped, verify that the I have power to the turn signal flasher. And something I didn't realize until just now is the turn signal flasher is down here, the hazard flasher is up there. There are actually two different parts. I don't know why I didn't realize that. I'm sure I knew it at some point, but it's just not something I work with every day, so I forgot. And if you'd like to follow along with how I'm troubleshooting this, there is a link in the description that will take you to a wiring uh, troubleshooting guide that I made for you that helps you keep track of all the important things so that way you can troubleshoot the system effectively, start at one end, go to the other, and that way you know you're hitting everything that's important. So check that out. I'm going to be following that and what I'm doing here. First up, we're going to check power. There's my ground block and there's my power block. I got 12.45 volts. That'll work great. Using the handy dandy guide, the turn and backup is right here. This is important because sometimes over time the uh, white lettering on these disappears. Things happen. It's an old car. So I'm going to go to that fuse. It's a 20 amper. We're going to verify we got power in, make sure the fuse is good, and I'll go from there. Working under the dashboard is never easy. So that right there is supposed to be where the turn signal canister goes. I went and borrowed a good one from my 85 Buick Regal. Love that car. And I just put it in here. No turn signals uh, came about. So I was searching for power, trying to find power. I took the fuse out, which would be kind of like right there where my Cam my flashlight shining there at that empty one, uh, one, two, three up right below the 220s. And uh, I noticed I had power into the fuse, power out of the fuse, and things just were not giving me the answer I was looking for. I was trying to probe for power on one of those two wires just to see if I got power. And I started pulling the fuse out and uh, those little guys just jiggled out and were a mess. So I think, <laughs> I'm 95% certain that I got to figure out how to replace the connection at the fuse block. This is going to be a minute. One more thing that I noticed there is that per the wiring diagram, uh, the output of that fuse powers the backup lights. So I undid my mega shifter cover a little bit and just actuated my backup light switch, which I know has worked in the past and I do not have backup lights. So that's an indicator that I wasn't getting power through the system. Now we know why. So now that I can definitively say that that fuse block has to come out to fix that terminal, there's a couple of things that we have to do. I gotta go find a new terminal, which I think I've got a source for, I'll show you that in a second. And we also have to get the fuse block out to be able to get to the back side of the fuse block. There's three fasteners that need to be undone. Let me show you where they are. That there is the back side of the fuse block and you can see the 10 millimeter bolt uh, sticking through. That needs to get undone. It's very hard to get the lighting right, but there are two little screws. One over here and one up there. They're, I don't remember, I think they're seven millimeter and they just backed right out. Let's go find some terminals. So it's worth noting how I'm getting to that connector. The inner fender is in place. Uh, I did swap this over to a manual brake setup so it removes the big power booster, which makes this a lot easier to get to. I've got a 10 millimeter on a short extension to a quarter inch uh, 
wobbly and a long extension to be able to get it to somewhere where I can actually, you know, manipulate it. All the bolts and screws are loosened and it is away from the firewall. Uh, that little guy has a couple of clips that just bolt or grab hold of the legs there. And once that's separated, you can get to the back side of everything. Now, I'm going to grab a dental pick and uh, see if I can uh, re re release the retainer and get that connector out. Uh, this blue wire right here is the one I'm after. But given that I've also got some other issues that were uh, corrected many, many years ago, corrected bunny ears, uh, they worked many years ago. I'm going to go this road and... Uh, look at this for a minute and make sure I know what the heck I'm doing next. Well, it wasn't so bad. I pushed on it with a flat blade screwdriver just ever so gently and it popped right out the uh, back of the fuse block. So now that the fuse block is out, the wire is out, I have these little connectors that I found on Amazon. My local Napa couldn't find them. Nobody could find anything that was going to work. I found this on listing. Uh, reviewer said they were fixing an 83 Caballero. Same car. So I thought, great, this is going to work. Uh, I've held this up to what is left of the connector. I've slid it into the back of the fuse block. It looks like it's going to work absolutely perfect. Uh, I am going to solder this guy in because there's not a ton of meat there. There will be a link to these connectors. you got to buy them in a massive pack, but that's not the end of the world. So there will be a link to these in the description. Uh, if you need to fix fuse block issues, these are the ones to have. Okay, so that connector is replaced, and I know the one next to it looks a little bit mangled. The problem is that when you flip this guy over, you've got uh, terminal bars and individual connectors. I don't have the terminal bars. However, the fuse does make good enough contact to get by for now. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this guy. I'm going to have to do some poking around. And unfortunately, this one is also uh, hurt on the uh, bus bar side, the power bar side of the fuse. So I can't just swap the terminal like I did over here. So um, I'm going to do some digging, but short term, at least I'll be able to get the turn signals working again. So with the fuse block pretty well buttoned up, the only thing left to do is to put it back against the firewall. Now I did snap the two halves together. I pushed it up onto the firewall and I did those two longer bolts that hold it to the firewall first because the other side is, you know, kind of located off of everything and it's temperamental if you try and do it the other way plus you got to have something to push against a little bit to get the connectors engaged so start from the inside bolt it up go to the outside bolt it down and everything will go together exactly like it's supposed to reconnect your battery power is applied there is no smoke that is a good thing let's hit the key still no smoke right turn oh yes how about left turn yes well, I got a bulb out on that side, but let's check the others. Yes, I've got turn signals there. It's very bright, but that one's flashing. Woohoo! Those are some huge wins on the electrical front. I did buy a brand new flasher. This one came from Amazon. I'll also put a link in the description. It was like three bucks and everywhere else was like, 10. So I'm like, that's a no brainer. Uh, I did take the seat out. I got smart, took the seat out because it makes it so much easier to get your shoulders in there. I'm not a small man and my shoulders were getting scrunched up and I actually screwed up my rotator cuff for a couple of days because I was like tweaked in there funny. So you can see that by following a very logical progression, this stuff isn't that hard to find. This was an uncommon fix with some uncommon parts, but it's back in business. Remember, you guys can do this. I know you can. Thanks for watching. Let's get out of the garage and go build something.